This is Jade Nunes for New Day Review here at the CFE Arena where the UCF Knights concluded their home schedule with a 53-49 win over the number 15 ranked Cincinnati Bearcats. Sunday's win was the Knights' fourth win against a ranked opponent in school history. It was a close battle between both insisting teams. With 2.37 left in the game, Cincinnati's Jacob Evans three-pointer made it a two-point game bringing the score up to 48-46. UCF's B.J. Taylor then retaliated with a step-back three-pointer of his own with 33 seconds left in the game. Evans then made it a two-point game with another three-pointer with 13 seconds to go. Mateco falls two free throws and two seconds remaining gave the Knights a four-point cushion and the win. I mean, I work on those free throws every day, regardless of the situation or it's just it's the same shots I take every day on the same court. So it was just the routine shot. I, I just try to like just make those shots and win, win the game. Cincinnati's Trey Scott had an opportunity to tie the game with four seconds left, but missed on an open alley oop attempt. What's going through my mind is, you know, we knew we knew the only thing that would beat us was a three. So if he makes that, we're going into overtime. You know, it's going to be that simple for us. It's going to be overtime, and we, I, I, we weren't going to change our mindset. You know, we looked at this senior night. We wanted to win this game for our seniors, and we have to play five more minutes and hopefully try to get it done then. But that's the only thing that went through my mind was it wasn't a three. So it was like, okay, it'll be overtime. At home at UCF, uh, we'll go into overtime. The first half of the game was just as close as the second. In the final five minutes, both teams exchanged leads until Taylor scored six consecutive points to give the Knights a 30-27 to 27 lead entering halftime. Taylor was a fundamental piece and arguably the Knights' best win of the season. The redshirt sophomore scored a season-high 27 points and tallied three rebounds and two assists in 40 minutes. Uh, well, I saw BJ had it go on in the first half, and so at that point, the main thing is I wanted to make sure that BJ just, you know, stayed aggressive but picked his spots. You know, when you're a point guard, the ball needs to touch other people's hands as well. So I wanted him to stay aggressive, but I also wanted him to keep it moving. And so that's why he just didn't take, you know, do that, you know, throughout the entire game. There were stretches where he was quiet. But those stretches that he was quiet was by design. And I wanted the ball to move to Matt, to move to AJ, to move to Taco. And then, okay, now we call his number some more. And I thought it gave us a chance by doing that for him to catch his breath because it takes a lot, especially against that defense, to try to stay that aggressive for 40 minutes. So I think him picking his spots was really good. And tonight, you know, when we called his number, you know, he, he's always stepped up. And that's, uh, that's what really good guards do. Seniors Matt Williams, Tank Efiani, and Nick Banyard played on their home court for one last time today. Although Williams did not have a good offensive performance in today's game, his teammates said he was instrumental on defense. I mean, he, he was huge just having the game that he had. I mean, knowing that he couldn't, that he wasn't getting his shots going. I mean, that's just maturity to know that he can still help us win and that he can still impact us on the defensive. He can still impact the game on the defensive end. I mean, and that's, that's, that's what our culture is. I mean, playing for each other, playing defense the way we play it. I mean, we don't want to let each other down. Uh, Taco doesn't want to let me down. I don't want to let Taco down. And Nick doesn't want to let Matt down. Matt doesn't want to let Nick down. I mean, we fight for each other on the defensive end because that's where we hang our hat. So, I mean, that's been our growth throughout the year, just fighting for each other on the defensive end and making it hard on the other team. Sophomore center tackle fall added seven points, four blocks, and five rebounds in 29 minutes. Coach Stocking shared how he values Fall's presence in the paint, not just in his ability to block shots, but also in his ability to alter them. He was a huge factor in the game. Just his presence in the paint. I knew when he started changing shots, blocking shots, you know, his presence in the lane when they were coming in, I could see guys looking around for him. And when you know guys start to do that and that focused on what they're trying to accomplish, then you know that, that, that he's affecting what's going on out there. I don't think the block shot numbers really you know, serve him justice with his ability to change so many shots or change people's minds on even taking a shot when they drive in there. So he, uh, he affects the game. And, uh, and he's a huge, we built our defense around him. And, uh, and we should have because you know, we thought he could really you know, influence what happens. And he did tonight. For their last game of the season, the Knights travel to Tampa to face the USF Bulls this Thursday at 7 p.m. For a New Day Review, this is Jade Nunes.